Again, I've got a lot to share, so I better get going here. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, sit down, make yourself comfortable, and uh, uh, get the, your Bibles out and join us in this uh, Bible study. Let's begin, please, by turning to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. I think uh, these verses are going to help in uh, giving us giving us a, a, an understanding of of let's say our biblical senses. Uh, there are spiritual things that God Almighty has equipped us with that I think many times Christians are not aware of. And so we want to uh, look at these. Again, we're in Hebrews chapter 11. I mean, no, 5 verse 11. We'll get it right here. Quote, Of whom we have many things to say, And hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. Now I wonder whom he's talking to here. Surely he wouldn't be talking to Christians. Well, obviously, of course, if you understand these verses in context, that's exactly who he is talking to. He is talking to Christians who are dull of hearing. Let me be a little more facetious. Of course, this would only he was only referring to the Christians of his day and time, not Christians today. Christians are much more advanced today. Uh, they, they wouldn't be dull of hearing today, would they be? Uh, yes, you and I know that the majority of those who refer to themselves as Christians are extremely, and I, I use that word, I think, very correctly, extremely dull of hearing. What? Well, they're spiritually dull of hearing because they have not really been reading God's Word and absorbing God's Word, praying and meditating upon that Word, studying the Word to show thyself approved, all of that. They're not digesting the Word of God. Now, if we were digesting the Word of God the way that we would be, we wouldn't be, really, we wouldn't be having a lot of the problems we're having today as a people, as a nation. Certainly, that reprobate, Obama, would not have been voted into office the first term, certainly not the first term, and most certainly not the second term. The very fact that He was elected, shows me that that would not have been possible were it not for a lot of those who refer to themselves as Christians actually voting for him. Why might they vote for him? Well, because believe it or not, there's a lot of, quote, Christians working for the IRS today. Oh, yeah. They hold, they hold. Uh, IRS positions. They're working for the Treasury Department in some capacity. There are many within government jobs who want to increase the size of government, who want, and they, they may philosophically feel sorry for the average people out there, but they actually justify it. We deserve this. We're working for you. And they love to have this power. You ever been around bureaucrats? You go in there to get some service or get something taken care of, or you encounter a government employee. I mean, they they love the power they have, and they're not shy about exercising it and telling you what to do. They don't think of you as being over them. They think of themselves as being over you. And there's all this bureaucratic government Insanity, because that's the way Babylon works. That's the way socialism works. That's the way communism works. 
And that would make and bless the heart of Karl Marx. He would be so blessed and so honored that America is going down the communistic yellow brick road like it is today, or red brick road. Why, again, is this happening? It's not rocket scientist type of information that we're passing along here. And yet, it just goes over most people's heads. The Word of God is not in their heart. And it's not in their heart because they're not reading and studying and applying God's Word. That's the basics. That's the pure, simple truth as to why they are dull of hearing. If, if the Word of God is not in their heart, it certainly cannot be in their mind. And really, that's what we're talking about. But there's also, I would say, yes, we can extend that to our spiritual conscience. Do they have a biblical spiritual conscience? No, most of them do not. They, have, they are just comfortable with the money they receive, the benefits that they receive, and uh, sorry if that steps on anybody's toes out there, but I want my early retirement. You hear about the IRS right now, and we know that they're under investigation by Congress and all that stuff, and, oh, there's so much that we could say on that and and, and get off on a tangent, but you notice that these people weren't really fired. They continue with the same wages that they had, right? When when it comes to um, private jobs... In private industry, if you're not doing your job and they feel that you need to be dismissed because you're you're doing something wrong that's hurting the company, they go and they say, you pack your your, your belongings, you clean out your desk, and you get out of here. You're gone. Right? And, And that's it. It's not that you're gone, but you know what? You're a public employee. You're, you're working for the government, state or federal government or county government, and we can't really, far, we can get rid of you, but we really, you have these, these, these uh, benefits that are locked in, and so you, we have to let you go, but you go with all these benefits. Well, give me that kind of option, in a sense. You know what I'm talking about? In a worldly sense, oh yeah, that's great. You're going to fire me, but I get to leave with all these benefits. Or uh, I was listening to a teacher on on our baseball team that we play locally in town here, and you have various people with different jobs out there. And he's out there bragging about what he can do as a teacher and all the benefits that he gets. Let me tell you, teachers, and I'm sure some of you may be listening that might be teachers out there, oh, how dare you say that about me and my profession? You know, okay, Uh, I'm just telling the facts. You know as well as I do, if you are a teacher out there, you guys get quite a bit of benefits. Yeah, I'm sure you sweat and you have this, you have to put up with the students, you have to put up your bureaucracy, and you have to compromise in this area, and you you have to go along with the worldly uh, wisdom that's going on out there, right? But you get tremendous benefits. And this guy was going through all of them, and uh, some of the guys who were on the team just kind of laughing about it. And they say, well, I work here and over here and this. And you get better benefits than I do. And I thought I got great benefits. So I'm listening to all this. Says, they get to ret- retire after 20 years, a lot of them. I mean, this guy was saying, that's what he was saying. And I'm like, really? Really? Oh, and I have to say this too. Uh, I hate to inject this into the conversation, but it's actually what happened, so I'm going to repeat some of it. He was there talking about explicitly sexual, perverted things that he loved doing. Uh, I'm not kidding you. We're sitting on the bench here, and I'm just looking at him. And by the way, he was a fat, overweight pig. (gasps) How dare you say that? I'm just looking looking at his appearance. I'm looking at his mentality, and the fact that his thinking was just as bad as, you know, his orientation. My gosh, it was ungodly. It was unbiblical. But I'm listening to all this stuff, 
And and uh, my son, was one of my sons, I have three, two of my sons actually playing on the team. One of them was out there in another position, but, but one of my sons just looked over at me and says, you hearing this, Dad? I said, yeah, I'm hearing it. He says, of course, half the guys on the team did not like this guy at all. Couldn't stand him, couldn't hardly put up with him. And, you know, he had a selfish attitude. People are listening to me, well, when are you going to get on with the song? But I'm just pointing out some things here. You, It's amazing about character. If you don't love Jesus, et cetera, et cetera, it shows. If you don't have a biblical conscience, it shows, does it not? Well, he had a baseball bat. And I, I remember from the very beginning when he would start with the team here several weeks ago, he had his own baseball bat. Now, I bought a baseball bat for the team. There were some other baseball bats. I bought it specifically to contribute to the team. And uh, I don't mind it. It's a white one. I don't mind. I'm not saying because of a white race. I'm just saying it was a white one. This guy bought a white one. And he's telling everybody on the team, this teacher, nobody. He was a minute. He says, nobody touch that bat. That's my bat. Only I can use it. And the guy, everybody's looking at him and says, really? But my point is this. Look at his attitude, his selfishness. And look at, look at his character and, and all this stuff here. What does that tell you? And our government loves to hire on people like that. You know, when they hire you on, there's no value clarification other than worldly values. Do you discriminate? Are you bigoted? Do you do this? Do you? Oh, no. Well, you'll fit right in. Here's where you sign up. But, oh yes, I do have godly values. Yes, I do believe America was founded as a Christian nation. And I'm going to teach Christian history. Do you think they would hire you on? No, no. So yeah, okay, this may make some people uncomfortable. But I want to get into the Boy Scouts a little bit, if I can get into that. And our military. Oh my, you know, you know this past week that they voted that, uh, Whole, uh, uh, Boy Scouts, they cannot refuse. That they voted this as a group. It's supposed to be the the majority one in the vote, sixty something percent. That homosexual boys can now join and participate and be Boy Scouts now. But according to what I understand from the way that they voted, the leaders and the scoutmasters cannot be. Correct. You're kidding me. Oh, it's okay to let homosexual boys come in. And they can get intense with one another, and they can start experimenting with one another, and you can't complain really about it. Basically, that's what, because we're a lot, and, but it's, it's okay for them, but we can't allow homosexual leaders now to be. Why? Do you see the Babylonian thinking there? It's just crazy. Now, a lot of them, thank God, are saying, you know, we're, we're not going to support this. I'm, bring, I'm taking my kids out. They're gonna, there's going to be some ramifications. But the same thing is going on in our military. That's why I'm telling people, it's a sodomite-loving, sodomite-supporting military, and you're being a part of that by being in that military. Oh, no, I think the scouts is a different issue. No, it's not. No, it's not. I mean, we're going to have to come out of her, folks. Come out of her. Let's suppose in that, um, uh, God forbid, that I was a homosexual. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. No, it's not okay. It's not okay that I live any way that I want to. It's not okay that I violate God's law. It's not okay that I bring perversion and ungodliness into this church and in this movement. No, it's not okay. And you should not want to be a part of it, right? Same thing with anything else out there. We're going to have to learn more and more to say no to Babylon. And we're going to have to look more closely. I understand come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sin. There's a timing and all that. But still, you've got to look at the principle there. Oh, it's, not, it's, it's just not God's timing, Pastor. Well, is it God's timing to, if I, if I say, hey, I divorced my wife and I have uh, three or four girlfriends on the side, is that okay? You want to be a part of this church and, 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 and just... Pastor Barley's living an immoral life and teaching immorality. Is that okay? No. That's because we can apply that principle, come out of her. And we shouldn't be a part of that kind of sin. If you're going to do that, Pastor, we can't be a part of your church. Well, obviously not. 
But why not in other areas too? I mean, we got to get our head out of the sand because the enemy is growing. And the reason they're growing is because we're not living the biblical lifestyle. We're not living kingdom life the way that we should be. And so, anyway, George, you wanted to comment real quick? Well, about the uh, military. The military? It's increasing in multiculturalism. Yes, increasing in multiculturalism. Yeah. yeah, a lot of whites are getting out. And I say good. Good. Your, your security is not in the military, folks. The benefits that they may have uh, is, is not what you need. Uh, what we need to do is obey God's word and do it in faith. All right. So, dull of hearing. We just can't stress that enough. And so... The answer is to get out of this dull of hearing, right? So we've got to start reading God's Word again. We've got to tune in to the Lord Jesus Christ and His Holy Spirit and His guidance. We've got to start reading the Word of God and get some spiritual discernment within us. And the only way we can do that is to read God's Word, live God's Word, participate in the things of the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Verse 12. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. We shouldn't have to be, Paul's saying, we shouldn't have to be going over these things, but apparently we do because you haven't even learned the first aspects of, of your salvation. You haven't even learned the first principles of the kingdom. And if you did, it went in one ear and out the other. Somebody's got along with you and dulled your hearing. And that's the problem. We have lying preachers and ministers full, all over our nation today that are calling themselves Christians, that are calling themselves evangelists, that are calling them, yeah, Judeo-Christian. But I don't care where they're coming from. They could be coming from our own movement. I don't care. We're going to have to wake up. All of us are going to have to wake up and, and, and realize that if we start adhering to the good and we start being the good, I've got an article in this next news that are coming out on this. You need to really read that and, and putting the good in, by doing that, the good has the ingredients, it has the nutrition. It has the spiritual power to overcome the bad. There are some vital spiritual principles I'm putting in that article you need to pay attention to. And that's really what this is all about. This is in keeping with what the Apostle Paul is proclaiming and teaching in these verses. All right? That you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. The oracles is God's holy place. We've got to enter into that holy place. We've got to have a, a sense of holiness about us and understanding what that means and that we live and move and have our being within that area of the oracle of God, that holiness, that coming into the holy of holies. So, Wow, when you get into that, you start getting into the Ark of the Covenant. You start getting into the spiritual principles of the Ark of the Covenant, which is His law, uh, which is uh, His Word. It's the Holy Spirit. It's, it's all, all these things that we have to, to uh, understand the spiritual application of. Okay? First principles of the oracle of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Now, we could just kind of repeat that over and over again until that kind of sinks in, which is, again, and that you have need of milk and not of strong meat, meaning that we really should be eating what as Christians? The strong meat of God's Word. And the only way that you can do that is if you have your senses discerned, properly aligned, and in keeping with the principles of God's Word and His Holy Spirit guidance upon us. We've got to have that. 
What are we talking about here? We're talking about kingdom living again. Do you understand that, everybody? We're talking about kingdom living, which apparently is much more important, vitally important than what most Christians understand. Do most Christians even realize there is a kingdom of God? Do they even understand what the kingdom of God is all about? Do they know who the kingdom people are? Do they even really know who the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is, although they call Him Lord, Lord? They don't really know Him. And they're not really living in keeping with His spiritual uh, word, His spiritual authority. They're not governed by His spiritual authority. They're governed by more of what their carnal mind thinks and how they feel and their emotion the world teaches them, even Judeo-Christianity teaches them, to get in touch with their emotions more often than not. And the way that they gauge themselves is by how, how emotionally they are in tune with the feelings and the needs and the wants of this new world order. The values of this of the world in many cases, are much more important to them. Coming in line with what seems and appears to be spiritual, and yet is is destroying the very fabrics of our nation, of Christendom. We're moving further and further away from the way, the truth, and the light, and the life. Are we not? We've got to do something, and something can be done. Are you listening to me, please, everybody? Something can be done. Otherwise, what are we doing? We're we're on the wrong track today. We've got to get back on the right track. And even the seemingly simple principle that Jesus talked about, he says, you've got to look to me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. I will not lie to you. I am the Word. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word dwelt among us, and the Word became flesh, as we read on in verse 14. We need Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if we will tune into Him through prayer and supplication, through repentance, through humility, and we say, I'm nothing. I don't know. I'm, gonna, I'm just putting it in your hands, Jesus, by faith. I'm going to live by faith as Abraham had to do. And I'm going to trust you. Get rid of all the garbage that I don't need. I want you to align me. I'm committing myself to you. I've had to do that. You've got to do that. We've got to do these spiritual things. We've got to do these biblical things. Well, we're not going to grow, and we're not going to be a part of the solution, but we will continue to be a part of the problem. And we'll continue to be dull of hearing. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to put it on another level for you here. Hang in there. I'm going to put it on this way. Your ears ought to be screaming at all the ungodliness that's going on in our world today because your ears are not dull of hearing. Your senses, your spiritual senses are discerned by the Holy Spirit and God. And you can hear, you can sense the ungodliness that's going on about you. Well, I'm sure a lot of you are shaking your heads right now saying that's exactly how I feel. And that's how I feel too. And that means, it's not that you let your guard down, but you're, you're maturing, you're progressing spiritually. And that's a good sign. Amen? All right, for everyone that uses milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. Unskilled in what? In the word of righteousness, which is right doing, which is applying God's law. And you know something, folks? I, like Paul, feel like sometimes I shouldn't have to even go over some of these things. It should be second nature to Christians. Should it not? That we understand the vital importance of applying God's law. I shouldn't even have to say, 
We're not teaching that God's law saves you because we don't teach that. Right? But we do teach that righteousness is obeying God's law. Because 1 John 3, 4 says that sin is transgression of God's law. It defines what sin is. For he is a babe, and we want to come out of the baby stage, but strong meat belongeth unto them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use, think about this, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. By reason of use. Yeah, that means you have to use and you have to apply the word of truth in your life, in your family. You may not be able to do something about what's going on in Washington, D.C. But actually, by you obeying and applying God's word locally with you, you yourself, your own life, and your family, and your community, you're actually having an impact upon what's going on in Washington, D.C. How could that be, Pastor? Let me put it to you this way, folks. I don't know how to, some, you have to get down to basics with people sometimes, right? How did Jesus do it? What do you mean, Pastor? How did Jesus do it? How did Jesus live his life? When he prayed up on the mountain, when he prayed anywhere he went, when he taught, when he got along with his disciples, and he was teaching from God's word, was it of any good any use? Yes, it was. Right? And the word tells us we are to live this way. We are to do this. We're to live and move and have our being within Him. We're to, we're to move according to the leading of His Holy Spirit. And all of that applies. So what I'm telling you is, I'm convinced Christians, to a large degree, are not doing what we're told here because their senses do not discern good and evil. Now, I don't want to brag on our movement too much, but I am going to brag a little bit here. And what I'm talking about, I'm talking about kingdom believers, true kingdom believers all over, wherever you're at. They, they know what I've been teaching here. They understand the biblical, spiritual kingdom principles that I've been teaching here, and they're doing those. And they can, their, their senses are exercised to discern. Hey, what our government's doing is wrong. Hey, the Federal Reserve is built upon unbiblical, ungodly principles, and we should not be tolerating that ungodly monetary system. We should not be tolerating a Federal Reserve. We should not be tolerating the IRS Treasury, which is a part of that. We should not be tolerating uh, these corporate organizations for commercial purposes, not biblical, godly purposes. But they should be, we should only tolerate those organizations, those businesses, those forms of government that are in keeping with kingdom principles. Because this Babylonian system that I've been describing for you here is what is killing us. And until, please listen, until your senses are discerned to understand what I just said, and your senses are so finely in tune with the kingdom principles and kingdom, the kingdom of God that you realize, wow, Babylon has to fall. Babylon is destroying us. It's destroying our nation. It's destroying God's people. It, we're living in harlotry. We're supporting and fornicating with these strange gods in this multiculturalism type of Christianity today, this Judeo even Christianity today. We are violating God's word on so many levels out, out here. And we understand that this, quote, American way of life that has become now is ungodly 
and it's got to be brought down. <gasps> that is un-American. It may be un-American, but it's not unbiblical. On a lot of different levels. On a lot of different levels, I'm telling you. Most of what we see allowed today and that most Americans are participating in because their senses have been corrupted by the lust of money and greed and, and uh, the television today. I mean, oh my God, they're allowing things into their home that they would know why, in no way, shape, or form allow. But because they're sitting in the privacy of the home and they're watching a lot of these things, oh, it's okay, it's okay. And their minds become corrupted and their senses corrupted where they cannot discern good and evil. Well, wait a minute. I see, I see this race mixing going on. I see these homosexuals smiling, holding hands, and kissing one another on TV. It must be okay. I see our generals agreeing with the President of the United States that homosexuality in the military would be a good thing. Oh, these guys must be way smarter than we are. They're four-star generals. So we, we shouldn't argue against that. And I hear that this general is a Christian. Why he, 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 I've heard that he reads out of the Bible. Yeah, well, I've heard Obama reads out of the Bible too. As far as I'm concerned, he's far more of a damnable Muslim and a communist than he is a Christian. In fact, he's not a Christian if you're any of those things. I got a, we got a, we got a little uh, statement in our next newsletter coming out, if I can remember how it's, you know, it's stated, but it says that uh, uh, you never hear or see anyone, the ACLU, uh, filing a lawsuit suit against Muslims. Now you have to stop and think about that. But they're all the time fighting against Christians... Filing lawsuits against Christians, any little thing they do, but they don't against Muslims. Why would that be? Well, you fill in the blanks on it. Okay. So, um, let's move to 2 Thessalonians now. Whoops, I went way past it there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 11. Here's a good one. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 11. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Oh! <gasps> Would God Almighty do that? Well, that's what it says. In other words, they will. Fo- he's saying, they're not going to follow me and my righteous principles and my righteous law. They're not going to depend upon the Lord Jesus Christ or look to Him as their Savior and their Deliverer, etc. So I'm going to send them a strong delusion. I'm going to send them a strong delusion that they may actually believe the lies. These lies. Are they not do is that not happening today? So you know who's causing this? Who's causing this judgment, this tribulation we're going through today? God Almighty. Oh <gasps> yeah. I mean we could sit around and blame Obama and we could blame the Federal Reserve and we could blame the Canaanites and the Edomites and all these other things going on. But ultimately, because uh, Israel has turned from God's word, God's allowing this deception to be upon us today that's controlling our people and it's destroying our nation. Now that's some serious preaching right there, if you understand the sovereignty of God. Well, it's too much for me, Pastor. I can't handle that. I, I, don't, I don't know if I can believe that. I don't want to believe. Well, then you don't. Just tear that script. Here it is right here. You're there. Just go ahead and tear that out of your Bible. Make you feel better? Yeah. Next verse. That they all might be damned. Ooh, we're really serious here now. Who believe not in the truth, 
but had pleasure in what? Unrighteousness. They had pleasure in lawlessness. You understand what that unrighteousness? What's that mean? Non-righteousness. They had pleasure in not applying and living according to the principles of God's word and his law, his law word. They had pleasure in it. Well, isn't that what we've been talking about today? Isn't that what is happening today? You know, there's no way an IRS or any of these other bureaucratic, big government bureaucratic agencies could get to the power and the corrupt level that they are today unless people were believing a lie and living and wanting unrighteous uh, authority over them. See, that's what we're having today. Obama authority is unrighteous authority. Bush authority is unrighteous authority. Now you could just keep going on and on with that. Our, our, our legislatures, all they are, biblically, are just a bunch of false gods r- 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 running their mouths. Promising people what they want to hear. By the way, I want to assure you this goes on on the conservative level. Well, we want to we want to fight the IRS, and we want to put we want to curtail what the IRS is doing because we hear you, conservatives. We're listening to you. Oh, really? You better promise. I mean, watch out what these conservative Republicans promising you. And actually, in some cases, if your senses aren't properly discerned, and they're both corruptible, damnable devils, as far as I'm concerned, but uh, sometimes the Democrats tell you the truth, but your senses aren't discerned to even hear what they're telling you. I know it's hard to believe, but sometimes the Democrats can actually have more libertarian principles that are actually more in keeping with God's word. Now, I agree, I'm not, a de- I'm not a Democrat. But as I tell people also, I'm not a Republican. Well, are you a libertarian? No, I'm not either that. I'm a Christian. And if what somebody's saying aligns with God's word and the principles of God's word, I'm all for it. But I'm much more radical than any of those because I want the kingdom of God to come. I want kingdom of God rule. And so I want to see all of these systems fall. I want to see them all. Gone. What? You don't need a king over you? You don't need all the power that this king can give you? You don't need all the king's horses and all the king's men to screw the life up the way that we have today? No, I don't need it. You Neither do you. What do you need? I need Jesus and I need faith in him. That's about it. Which is, which is his word. And, and that's what we need. <gasps> well, you, you, can, you, how can you live without a government bureaucrat standing over you, looking over you, every, 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 your, your every need, and, and following what you're doing? You might do something to hurt somebody. Uh, government does something to hurt somebody every day. I don't. I could, I could list you probably thousands of things that the government's doing to hurt people today, and I could call my gov- or congressman, and they don't care. How are they really helping you? What is all this one world order about? Why, and why would God Almighty warn us in His Word about this one world, new world order? Because it's evil. And if your senses aren't discerned and exercised enough to understand what this evil is, and you don't have a sufficient enough biblical knowledge and understanding to know that this knowledge of evil is killing us and destroying us, and you don't have enough biblical wisdom and knowledge to understand that they are manipulating the yin and the yang philosophy of good and evil. Both of them are actually being manipulated as a form of Kabbalah thinking, a form of the Kabbalah religion that has gone back to the time of Adam and Eve and what happened in the Garden of Eden. So if you're saying to me, well... 
the bottom line is this, folks. Let me. I'm, our time's getting getting out real quick. But you've got to understand what this not quote knowledge of good and evil is. And didn't God Almighty tell Adam and Eve, don't don't participate in that quote knowledge of good and evil? What might that have meant? Well, there's good there. It says good. It is a manipulation of good and evil to produce a controlled society that is controlled by these false gods. These false gods. And these false gods know how to manipulate you through this Kabbalah thinking, this Kabbalah manipulation of good and evil. And if your senses are not discerned to understand this, you're in trouble. Because they can take good, the quote good, and make it appear also right. But all they are doing is taking good and evil and manipulating it and passing it off as good for you. Look at the vitamins, I mean, not the vitamins, look at the nutrition that they are manipulating today. Look at the Monsantos, look at the GMO, look at all this corruption of our food. And they're doing it in the form of God, worldly, Garden of Eden, good and evil knowledge. What might that mean, Pastor? I'm going to give you another term to elevate your your, your senses. Okay, you ready? Science. They're using these gods of science that are funded by our federal our federal dollars. They're stealing our money, just like in the public school support the ungodliness is being taught in evolution. They are taking our money to fund all these scientific biology. They're, they're Frankenstein laboratories to create all this uh, monster food that they're splicing and injecting with this and injecting with that, manipulating God's creation in an unnatural way and feeding us this monster Frankenstein Monsanto's food and whatever else you want to call it out there. And they're destroying our health, they're destroying our mind, they're destroying us spiritually. You see, they understand, folks, they can control you spiritually if they can control you spiritually, um, uh, physically. They can control you spiritually, they know, if they can control you physically. They must bring us down and make us sick in our minds and in our bodies. And that's how a lot of times, in a lot of ways, they're controlling us. Can I get an amen? Amen. Thank you. This is heavy duty stuff, but, you know, we just want the milk, Pastor. This is too much for me. Just too much for me. Oh, yeah, well, I've watched plenty of people in my family get cancer. I'll never forget my uh, aunt. Loved her dearly. And there's others in my family, just using this as an example. I watched her lose all of her hair. I watched her at home in her bed just crying and sick to death and throwing up from this cancer treatment she was getting. And, and uh, my uncle lost everything. He went insane for a while over all the stuff that the doctors were doing. And he himself was a doctor. He was a dentist. And he couldn't control it. He couldn't understand what was going on. He kind of went berserk over it, and I can't, I can't blame him. But he lost a lot of his wealth and stuff. But he would done, have done anything to save his wife and her life. And he was told, this is what must happen. This is what you must do to save her life. Because why do we do a lot of things? Because we're in fear Of what? We're in fear of dying. And we're 
we are really in fear of these false gods. In what way, Pastor? We did what they said. Yes, that's the point. You have more respect for these false gods that are over you today because they're experts, they're scientists, they're, they're doctors, they're this and that. I'm not saying all of them are bad. But I'm saying, what have we done? We've made gods out of these people today. They've been manipulating our food far longer and putting chemicals in it far long before the Monsanto concept and exposure even came to light. Look at the food that we've had at the grocery stores and you go in there, look at it, just full of chemicals, full of chemicals. How long have we been going there buying it, buying it, buying it? With, with our senses discerned by Kabbalah thinking. Oh, it says whole wheat on here. See, it's good. What about the bad stuff in there? What about the dioxins? What about all these? What about the uh, I mean, aspartame that they put in it? What about all these man-made sugars? What about all these man-made flavors that they're putting into it? What about all these chemicals that I can't even pronounce their names that are in it? Could that be good for us? No. People are waking up, though. And how are they going to wake up? Paul talked about it in these verses in some degree. We read earlier about teachers, and we need more teachers of the truth. Meaning we need people to stand up for God's Word and tell that pure, simple, uncomplicated truth. Well, it couldn't be that simple, Pastor. It has to be like Babylon says. We have to go to their lawyers because they've been to school. We have to go to their doctors because they've been to school. We have to trust their judges because they're Babylonian judges. They, they, they've been in Babylonian schools. They have this Babylonian understanding of what's right and wrong and good and evil. They're the ones that have told us that homosexuality is okay. They're the ones that are promoting all this promiscu- promiscuity. They're the ones that are promoting all this corporate law. They're the ones that are saying yes to all the tyranny of the IRS. They're the ones doing this. They're the, oh, yeah. Do you see it? Friends that are watching, do you understand what I'm telling you? Well, you don't need to preach to me. I'm part of the choir, you know, Pastor. I know what you're saying. That's right. All we need is the remnant waking up. I'm serious. No, we got to get out there and get the masses awakened. No, if we just start waking up ourselves, applying the truth, being the good that God's called us to, it'll make all the difference in the world. All the difference. But those that had pleasure in unrighteousness. You know what? God does not change. That means that His law does not change. Can I get an amen? amen. His law does not change. And we must remember this. And you know something else that we need to do? We need to be thankful for that. Are you thankful that God does not change? Can you imagine if He changed all the time? Well, you said this 2,000 years ago, and now you're saying this? It's like I'm telling people on the spiritual Israel thing. These people that are teaching race mixing and spiritual Israel are lying to you. They're saying, well, God, yes, there was the old covenant. It's quite obvious that it's to Israel. But now under the new covenant, it's all different now. And I'm telling you, no, no. His word hasn't changed. And I'm thankful for that. I praise him for this. Why? Because it fits your theology? Not, not in the slightest. Because if he doesn't change, then I can read his unchanging word and believe his unchanging word. I can know that he has an unchanging law because he's an unchanging God. And I know that whatever is in there that I may think that I don't like that, that I know that I will like it in the kingdom because I'll see it clearly and understand it clearly. And I'll see that there is a blessed light and truth and, 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 and healing that's going to come to, to the nations because of this. Amen? It's a healing that will come. What do you say? It's a blessing that's coming, not a curse. It's a blessing that will be coming. 
Doing things God's way is a blessing, not a curse. And so we need to understand that God's word is his authoritative blessing to us. It's his authority, not man's authority. Quit looking to man and his systems out there. It's like I told you before. The way some people think is, well, what time should I get out of bed, government? Okay, now, what do I do next? Should I go in there and brush my teeth? Well, I don't know what to do, government, without your approval. You have to tell me what to do. You have to tell me what to think, because that's what you tell me all the time in the media and, and the public school system, and even in the churches now. I mean, we got to have, you. we need you, government. We need your regulation over us. We need that governmental Babylonian authority over us, and we can't function right. That's the world. And they really do think this way. Why? Yeah, we have to have all these regulations. Nobody would know what to do without all these government regulations and red tape. Really? Really? I don't need the government telling me to do what 90% of the things that I do in my life. And by the way, I don't need any of their uh, direction. I don't need any of their false authority in any way, shape, or form unless it's Babel, uh, excuse me, unless it's Bible based. Unless it's based upon the truth of God's word and the and there's lots of room for law, but righteous law, and it but it won't be filling huge buildings with volumes and volumes and volumes of Babylonian law and thinking. It'll be clear, concise, Bible-based principles that we can all understand. God's word and God's law is clear. For all to understand, ignorance of God's law is no excuse. Ignorant of Babylonian law, well, who can know it? Who can know it? And so that, when the when the judges come in, you go into court and the judges say, well, ignorant of the law is no excuse. While that fat pompous, you know what, has a, is lying to you, unless he's telling you, It's common law, which is based upon God's law, which is common to all men, and all this confusion and all this regulation, all this government agency red tape, and all this policy that we have today is really ungodly, uh, nation-destroying stuff. You don't need to pay attention to that in my courtroom. You just need to pay attention to the basic principles of God's law. And if you understand that, and you understand what real evil is, and what real right and wrong is, what real good is based upon the law, then you have my full attention in this courtroom. That's what it ought to be about. That's what it ought to be about. And that's what it ought to be based on. Well, how am I going to know if if somebody murdered somebody or not? God's law. You don't need man's law to tell you that. How am I going to know what real terrorism is? God's law. How am I going to know when it's time for war and what real war and how to to go to battle? What kind of war we should be engaging? God's law. How am I going to know what rape is and what it means for rape and what you know uh, what's right and wrong sexually? God's word, God's law. Oh, it has. You mean it has, what, what kind of a banking system should we have? Is it okay to have this usury banking system over us? How do I know what's right and wrong according to the money system and what kind of money we should have? God's law. Is silver a violation of God's law? No, it's a shackle. It's biblical money. Absolutely, use it. It's based upon just weights and measures. I mean, hey, couldn't we go on down the line and see that God's law does have solutions? But how many churches, especially the Judeo-Christian ones I point my finger at, tell you this truth? Very few. Very few. And I'm calling Christians, let's wake up. Let's come out of her. Be not partakers of her sins. Got to close. Time to go eat some of my good chicken noodle soup downstairs, hey? (laughs) Sorry for those that are watching, you miss out on that. But hey, come to the conference. You'll get some good food, good nutrition there. We're going to try to have, by the way, have good nutritional food there, organic, non-Monsanto stuff. I'm not saying we might not have a little corruption there, but uh, it's going to be way better than you can get at the cafeterias and stuff. Good, healthy food. That's what we're striving for at this conference, so... Please come. You're going to enjoy this conference. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you, and we just uh, 
uh, do pray for this conference again. We, had, we just want you to bring the people here that you want to, uh, need to be here. We want to uh, pray for kingdom understanding. We want to pay, pray for some kingdom principles and kingdom light and truth as we've never seen before come out in this conference. And we just pray for it. We put it in your capable hands, Jesus. We want this conference directed and led by you. In your name we pray, Jesus. And also we want to pray for the food we're eating right now and that you will bless it and nourish our bodies. Amen and amen.